everyone. Today we are doing the PYR test. Uh, we're expecting to do the PYR test when we have a catalase negative organism that is gram positive cocci in pairs and chains. So we're thinking either streptococcus or enterococcus um, out of our classroom organisms. And the two that would be positive out of all the streps and enterococcus that we have um, are any enterococcus and then the group A strep. So I have that here, ha, ha, ha. Okay, group A strep is streptococcus pyogenes, the causative agent of strep throat. Um, which I'm sure everybody has had. It's not fun. Um, <clears throat> so both of those are going to be positive, and then any other uh, strep that we have is going to be negative. All right, so let's get started on this test. So this test kit comes with um, these reagent or substrate um, impregnated discs here. They're little filter papers that have the reagent inside of them. Okay, and so what we're going to do first is we're going to pull those out, get them wet, and then we're going to add the organism to them in order for the organism to try um, to try to break apart the substrate, utilize the substrate. And the reason that it would be able to do that is if it had the PYR enzyme. It's a really long name, okay? It's very hard to say, but I'll say it anyway so you can laugh at me. It is uh, called pyrolinol aromidase, <laughs> okay? And this this uh, test kit is checking its activity. So while the organism is on the filter paper and it's um, using that enzyme to break apart and use, utilize the substrate, it forms a compound, okay? And that's beta naphylamine, all right? So the substrate is hydrolyzed, <clears throat> excuse me, hydrolyzed, and you end up with that beta naphylamine and then you add the color developer, okay? And if there is a red color, then the test is positive. If there is no red color, then that means that the substrate was not hydrolyzed because the organism does not have the PYR enzyme, okay? So we're going to do this really quickly. I have located a pair of uh, forceps or tweezers. You can use either. I have cleaned it with an alcohol prep pad. All right, and what we're going to do now is we're going to pull out a um, reagent, a reagent uh, test filter paper for each organism that we're gonna test, okay? If you use your fingers, you need to make sure that your gloves are dry and clean, okay? So we're doing this on an absorbent pad. Now, this is going to become a problem because the absorbent pad is orange on the other side, okay? Um, but, and that, you'll end up seeing the orange come through when it gets wet, as I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, and so if you finish the, if you finish the test and you need to transfer it to a white surface, that's completely fine. Um, but doing this on the absorbent pad is basically to make sure you don't make a mess. You could also do this on a microscope slide if you wanted to. Um, but to me that just, you lose a lot of area on that. Okay. So we're going to get this wet with four drops of deionized water, okay? So I'm going to take the cap off of that. I've got a clean pipette that I, see? Clean transfer pipette, gonna pull it in there, and then we're going to do the four drops of water on each of those pads. So that way the substrate is easily used. So one, two, three, four. Whoops. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now you see what I'm talking about with the orange coming through. 
all right? And we're looking for a red color at the end, so that's why that could be difficult. The next thing we're going to do is get a new loop, shake a loop out, and we're going to get our organisms and put them on there. So the first one that we're going to use is Enterococcus faecalis. Okay, that should be a positive test result. So let's do that guy. All right, Enterococcus here, beautiful. And you want to get two to three colonies. And we're going to put them onto the wet paper, filter paper, spread it all around so you get some really nice color development um, when we go and use the next reagent. All right, we're gonna get another, another loop and this time I'm going to do Streptococcus pyogenes. Okay, very beta hemolytic. All right, we're doing, again, two to three colonies. And put that on there. Okay, you can see that guy, it's really there. All right, and the next one we're going to do is any Streptococcus um, other than pyogenes. This one I'm using Strep A Galactiae. That is group B Strep. Okay. All right, so we have those on there. We're going to let them sit for two minutes, okay? So that they can, um, the bacteria, if they have the enzyme present, they'll be able to uh, hydrolyze that substrate in, in the, um, the discs. So I'll get back to you when we're closer to that time. Okay, so while we're coming to a close of this, I wanna show you this is the color developer, okay? and it is going to, um, is going to turn the uh, new compound red if the enzyme was present and it will not change color if, it, if the enzyme was, if the enzyme was present, it would change color um, from this color to red. And if the enzyme was not present, it would not turn red. So we're going to swirl, okay? almost at the end and we're going to add a drop to each of these and then we're going to let uh, we're going to observe for one minute in order to see if oh, in order to see if it turned positive so one one whoops one I'm going to add a second one because I don't think it covered everything. Um, now it overlaps, so whatever. Um, <clears throat> but it's supposed to turn anyway. So if you'll notice, it's kind of hard to see with the orange background there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to take each of them and put them onto a paper towel. That has already been labeled, okay? So, you can really see the red already. This is the Enterococcus. That is the Streptococcus pyogenes. And that, even though it kind of looks pink, it's not. <laughs> that one is uh, Streptococcus agalactiae. Okay, so we have a few more seconds. Yeah, it, it looks kind of pink on the video, but it's not really pink. It's just like, it's like an off-white beige color. Sorry that the color is not picking up very well. Um, but this is definitely turning um, pink to red, and this is turning pink to red, and those are absolutely positive. And that's what we were expecting to see. Okay, so uh, there you have it. Enterococcus and Streptococcus pyogenes are both considered PYR positive. So the next step in your decision tree for class would be to do a bioescaline uh, hydrolysis slant to see if, um, if it's positive or negative because that's going to be the defining one in our classroom. 
okay, the enterococcus would be bile escalin positive, and that's in another video, and the pyogenes, streptococcus pyogenes, would be negative, bile escalin negative. All right, I hope that is helpful for you, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.